Hello. Today we're going to focus on cost curves. Specifically, we're going to use a multiple choice type example that we don't typically go over. So this should help illuminate some of the strategies you should use towards multiple choice type questions. For this case, all the question is asking is which of the following is false. This means we're going to have to go through each individual answer choice and reason why it would be true or false. To start, let's look at option A. If fixed costs are strictly positive, average costs are larger than average variable costs. So we'll say fixed costs are positive, then average variable cost is less than average cost. OK, so let's see if that's true or false. To start, let's say our cost function is made up of variable components and fixed components. So cost is equal to variable cost plus fixed cost. If we're taking our average cost function, what we're doing is we're dividing this cost function by Q or by our quantity, right? So we're going to then in turn be say, saying that variable cost plus fixed costs divided by Q would be our average cost. Our average variable cost instead would just be variable cost divided by Q. As we can see, if we have this fixed cost component being added to variable cost before being divided by Q, average cost should be greater than average variable cost, meaning A is true. Let's take a look at B. Answer choice B states that if profits are strictly positive, if output is strictly positive, and output price is greater than average cost. So if P is greater than our average cost, then profits are strictly positive, is what B claims. Let's take a look. So if our average cost is the total cost function divided by quantity, and we're saying that we can sell at a price greater than this total cost divided by quantity, then we should see positive profits. We can see by saying that variable cost and fixed cost together divided by Q are less than our price. So we're making more money per unit than we need to use to produce that unit, factoring in both the amount that it costs to produce that unit on a variable sense and our overall fixed cost divided by the amount of units we produce. If both of these costs are accounted for when we're determining our average cost and the price is still greater than both of those, we should most definitely be making positive quantity, positive profit. OK, let's take a look at part C. Part C asks, if average costs equal marginal costs at output y star equals is greater than 0, then the slope of the average cost curve is 0 at y star. Let's take a look at our graph. To graph out this function, normally, our average variable cost curve looks something like this. And our marginal cost curve looks something like this. Our slope at the point where these two intersect would then be 0. Our marginal cost intersects our average variable cost at exactly a slope of 0 at our bottom most point of our average variable cost. Let's consider why that is. To do so, we can look at the math. I'm going to look at what happens with averages. Let's take, for instance, 5 plus 5 divided by 2. 
this would be the average of two fives. The average of these two numbers is five. The definition of a marginal number is the value of the next unit. If the value changes from five and then another five down to four, in other words, my average, my marginal is lower than my average, right? As I'm adding a number lower than the averages here, then my average will also be lowering. In this case, it's somewhere around 4.67. So what we're saying, let's take a look at this on the graph, is if my average was five plus five divided by two, I add in a number lower than what my average was, so my marginal is lower below this average curve, then we're gonna be lowering our average still. Or in other words, the slope of the average variable cost curve should be lowering. As we continue, let's say instead, I have a slope that's exactly equal or an average, a marginal value that's exactly equal to what my average was. Five plus five, we add in this additional five, then divide by three, we still get an average of five. At that point, our marginal cost is exactly equal to our average variable cost. Finally, we can take a look at what happens when we say five plus five plus six divided by three. In other words, my marginal value is now greater than my average value. We get an average of 5.33. So as marginal values are greater than average values, we increase the slope of our average variable cost. So the question asks, if average costs equal marginal costs at output, y is greater than zero. This is a quantity where y is greater than zero or output is greater than zero. Then the slope of the average cost curve is zero at y star. That is true. If our marginal cost is equal to our average variable cost at this specific point, the slope is equal to zero. If the, that answer choice is true, then we should eliminate it because we're looking for the false option. Up next, we're looking at is marginal costs equal average variable costs when output is zero? If that's the case, we're saying output is zero, we're somewhere on this vertical axis. And we're saying, do average variable costs equal marginal costs at that point? Well, in this case, we're not really on either of these curves. They're both gonna limit to this vertical intercept. So they should be equal. There's no saying that they would not be equal to each other. They'd both be zero, in fact. If there's, if there's no production occurring, we have no cost. So for answer choice D, marginal costs equal our average variable costs when output is zero. Again, we're not looking at any of our fixed costs associated with production. So at the point where we are producing nothing, our marginal costs and our average costs, average variable costs rather, should be zero. Finally, answer choice E. If we're following along, this means that answer choice E has to be our answer. If we're following along with the answering of all the other options. But still, let's take a look. Short run costs of producing Y units of output are always less than long run costs of producing Y units of output. We should always know that short run is worse to be in than the long run for producers.
we always like to have more options as a producer. And so our costs of producing Y units should always be lower in the long run than in the short run, rather than the short run than the long run.